Oh hi there people, um, welcome to my channel. I'm Black Bright and I talk about a various number of topics and if you've already subscribed then thank you for subscribing, thank you for your comments. Uh, if you're new to the channel feel free to subscribe, like or share. Today I wanted to talk about Pretty Patel. Pretty is not the way it sounds, it's spelled P-R-I-T-I -I, but I guess she's not, she's quite a pretty woman so I guess it suits her. But anyway, that's not the reason why I want to talk about her today. I want to talk about her because she's talking about this. She wants criminals to feel terror once she gets her law reforms and orders into into being. She's going to have this, you know, criminals are going to feel absolute terror. I mean, I don't understand why, um, why they have somebody who would want to say something like that. To me, it's just like the Hostile Environment Act revisited. Isn't there, all, isn't there already terror being felt by immigrants? So is that now being extended to criminals? And what my concern is, it's not so much that um, criminals shouldn't feel terror and they, there shouldn't be a deterrent. It's just that because there's so much setups, because so much innocent people are being made guilty, you know, and framed, that is my problem. You know, they're capturing people via algorithms, they're doing it by face recognition, they're getting the wrong people, they're, they're putting people in detention centres and prisons and then afterwards finding out that they're not guilty and while they're in there waiting for to be charged, they're being criminalised. These are the criminals, in quotes, that I am concerned about when someone like Pretty Patel says she wants to put the fear of God on them. And what I also don't understand, I don't understand why they get people from immigrant backgrounds to take a harsh stance on immigrants or criminals or whatever they are. Most They, they claim that most of the criminals are black anyway, so or people of colour, even though statistics show otherwise. But that's how it's made to look. It's made to look like it's mostly people of colour that are criminals. And that's what pees me off. Because not only, I'm not saying there's no people, I'm not saying there's no immigrant criminals. Of course there are. There's lots of immigrants that commit crimes. But what I don't like is when they don't know categorically that a person is guilty. And the government or the police or the judges are, I don't want to say lazy, but it's not like they're Columbo and really look at the evidence. Nobody's got time for that. Nobody's got time for detective work. If we had, we, if we had detectives, a lot of times people wouldn't be wrongfully accused. But we don't have that luxury. And what we depend on is what people say. And if a police says it, he's more likely to be believed than if a civilian says it. So what chance does a civilian have if a dirty cop say has has wants who's had a bad day? I mean, sometimes there's good and bad cops everywhere. There's good people and bad people everywhere. But the fact of the matter is, if you come across a bad cop, how is the system going to know that that cop is bad? And if that cop decides that he wants to set someone up and that person goes to jail or that person goes through the criminal justice system, how is anybody going to know that that cop lied? And that's what concerns me. When they're talking about the death penalty, that concerns me because they've had so many people who they've executed only to find out that they were innocent afterwards. Now she's saying, Pretty Patel is saying, oh well, there's got to be a strong burden of proof. When they executed those people, they were convinced that they were guilty. That's why they were executed. If they had any doubt, they wouldn't have executed them. So these people are executed is not because um, they, you know, they didn't believe that they weren't guilty. They believed that they were guilty. So how can she now say, oh, there's going to be a strong burden of proof? 
when, like I said, sometimes you do have people who are corrupting government. You do have people who tell lies. You do have people who are not fair and just. And you have people who are having a bad day. So if all of those things are, are, are if all of those things are compounded and one poor they catch one poor bugger on the street, what chance does he have? And that's what concerns me. It concerns me that people who are, don't experience this kind of lifestyle and who live on some kind of pedestal cannot relate to the people on the ground and the people who have to go out their houses and the people who are victimised. And like I said, I'm not making a blanket statement and saying all people are victimised. I'm just saying the people who are. And you're, you know, it really, it really gets my goat when you find people of immigrant backgrounds taking a harsher stance with immigrants. It's like with black people. If a black person has a, is in a position of power, you'll, you'll notice that that black person, male or female, will come down harsher on the black employees or the people who are under him or her because they don't want it to be seen as though they're showing favoritism. So they go to the extreme. They go on the other end. And that poor black person doesn't have a chance. And that black person, that black boss or power or, or whatever that black person is over them, whether it's a black employee, whatever it is, you'll find that, that the people under him, if they had a white boss or a white team leader or white whatever, they would be treated better. But because black people in power, for some reason, they a lot of them, not all of them, feel as though they have something to prove. They come over as much harsher. And that's what I find like with Savage Javid and with this Pretty Patel. They feel as though they've got something to prove. They're overzealous. And, oh, you know, yes, I, you know, don't those people, do they think they're white? You know, do they think, oh, they're going to be exempt if the wrath were, if, if, if the shit was to hit the fan and all the immigrants were to be booted out? Just supposing, hypothetically, do they think they're going to be exempt because they took a harsh line on, on immigrants or they took a harsh line with criminals? They're not white. Yeah, they're born in England just like me, but they're not white. I'm not white. So I don't understand where this, you know, when they're dealing with their own people, because that's who they're dealing with. They're dealing with their own people and talking about having a harsher stance, because a lot of the criminals who um, come into the system, the ones that are drawn to our attention, are people of colour. Even though the statistics, we know the statistics prove otherwise. The statistics say 81% of criminals in jail are white. And only 11 or whatever the balance is, are people of colour. White, we're Asian, um, whatever. Black, Oriental, that's the balance. But 81% are white. So I don't know. And I just, what, but if everybody was treated fairly, I wouldn't be saying anything. But we're not in a fair world. And when I think about El Paso, 20 people shot, well, it's 28 people dead now. That was at the last count. I know that the people, um, some of them are hospitalized. They are in critical life-threatening conditions. So I don't even know if they're going to survive. But somebody like that, who's caught on camera, shooting people now he could get the he should get the death penalty because he's caught in the act but unless somebody is caught in the act there shouldn't be no death penalty because it's just too is you cannot be 100 percent sure that that person did it and then they, I remember, I don't know if you remember this but years ago they had a program called crime of passion where people used to kill um, 
I don't know if they killed more than one, but they would kill. And it was called a crime of passion because um, of their belief. And then I think the judge used to, I can't remember how it went, but I think the judge used to work out whether or not it was a crime of passion or something. But you could actually say that the El Paso thing was a crime of passion. I don't know. It reminded me of that Christchurch shooting with the mosque. But I mean, it's just... It's just bizarre how somebody can go into a shopping mall where they know that there's probably a lot of women and a lot of children. They're unlike, you know, I doubt if any of them had any guns and just randomly shoot them. I don't even know how he was stopped. I'm surprised he wasn't shot, you know, at least with the mosque guy. Somebody, I don't know who shot him. I don't know if the police came in and shot him. But this guy, he came out unharmed. He wasn't called a terrorist. He wasn't called anything. But that was a terrorist act. I don't know. But all I'm saying is that something like that should, um, that should get the death penalty. So I'm not saying I'm not against the death penalty, but you would have to know categorically, catch them on camera doing the act in order for them to get it. Otherwise, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it anyway. I don't believe taking a life for a life. I don't believe in that. But if Priti Patel is talking about bringing back the death penalty, it should be those kind of circumstances where it's it's le it's levied. Um, what else was I going to say? I was just going to say with her, what kind of record does she have? Um, she voted against raising benefits in line with costs. She voted against investigating the Iraq war. She voted against most human rights protections. So you know she's a Brexiteer. Um, what else did she vote against? I've mixed up all these papers now. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. What have you done, Black Bright? Okay. She voted against stricter asylum measures. And she voted against, oh, she voted for mass surveillance measures. So you know that she's probably a globalist. She probably wants 5G all around the place. She wants us all to be watched. Um, in 2014, she voted in favour of mass retention of information about individual communication. She further voted to require internet-based services like Google and Facebook to comply with UK warrants for data searches. Yet she also voted for limited use of such interceptions whilst voting to extend the power of the police to access communication data in the interest of national security. I mean, the other day they was banding, they was banding around these emotive words, you know, child pornography, child abuse and um, terrorism because they want WhatsApp to give up their encryption. At the moment, WhatsApp's double encrypts every the phone this actual software by default before you before you even get the phone so there's no way the fbi or the police or anybody none of the five eyes they can they can't get access to the information the message goes from one person to another and it, they can't get access to it so the police and the cia and the fbi they're all saying listen we need to have access. We need a back door so we have access to WhatsApp messages. And WhatsApp is saying no. And they're saying, well, look, we need to, it, you're, you know, we need to find the terrorists. We need to find, I mean, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Well, I'm sure that if they confiscate, if they, if they caught somebody and they suspected that person to be a child abuser or something, or a sex offender or you know, a terrorist, all they've got to do is take the phone. And I'm sure in exceptional circumstances, they could talk to WhatsApp and WhatsApp would give them access. Or they would have to talk to that person whose phone it is. I mean, once they've got the PIN or the password, they could look at them anyway. But I don't see why they need blanket um permission to access people's messages and phones and you know why i think it's all uh, you know preparing for 5g because in 5g they can't have any kind of stoppages they can't have any kind of encryption it needs to be open house that's probably what's put in um what they call it 
it's calling a, I was going to say they put a spanner in the works, that's it. I mean, Facebook was planning to do um, end to encryp encryption, I think it was this month or next month. Anyway, they were, had, they were planning to do end, and end, end to end encryption, but because of um, the police intervening and saying, look, we need this and you can't do this, they uh, there's a halt on it. But they claim that they are still going to do it, but who knows? I mean, I think Facebook is more likely to listen to the power that, that be, to be honest. The only thing is, is that if people get wind of it, you know, are they going to lose customers? I don't know. I mean, if I was on WhatsApp and I thought that a text I was going, I was sending to my old man was being was being ghosted, I don't think I'd like that. And as much as WhatsApp is convenient, mind you, WhatsApp people are so used to it now. And I mean, the beauty of WhatsApp is that you can actually make free calls abroad. That's the beauty of it. I mean, and a free service. So that, they really got it made with WhatsApp. And I think WhatsApp knows that they need their customers in order to um, keep, you know, the stocks up and to keep the, the product going. Anyway, I'm going off the subject now. But yeah, I just wanted to run that by you. I don't know how you feel about um, Pretty Patel and her harsh stance on criminals. Like I said, I believe criminals should be punished, but make sure you've got the right person that you say is a criminal. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that they sh you should be lenient with criminals, but I do, but we all know. I mean, I was watching RT News yesterday and there was this black guy. He'd been in prison for over 20 years. Every day his mother was crying and praying. 20 years he was in prison when his daughter was in nappies and he was just released, I think, two days ago. And that's what I'm concerned about. He, they found, oh, after 20 years, they found out that he wasn't guilty. That's my concern. People like that who do 20 years. I mean, that could have been somebody who did, who was up for the death penalty. And that's my concern. Not with who's guilty. What I'm concerned about is who is innocent and because of misjustice of the system, they're caught into it. And they don't stand a chance in hell. And then you have somebody like Priti Patel saying they're going to put the fear of God in criminals and terror. The, the, the terror, I don't even know how she put it, what she said. Something about some the terror, what she begins, oh, anyway, made out, oh, they're going to feel terror. Who the hell does she think she is? But they're going to feel terror. She's not God. You know what I mean? The immigrants are already terrified. Especially if they're illegal. They're already terrified. And that's why I'm wondering, I mean, is she talking about illegal immigrants? Is she going to work on um, reintroducing the hostile environment policy? Is that going to be revamped to make it terrible? terrible? I don't know. Anyway, what else can I say? I just thought I'd just rabbit on a little bit, keep you company. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.